Hey everybody, welcome back to Pine Fun, where we have fun with the puns. My name is Ryan, and we're here with a guest you might be familiar with. We're back with Francois Vigneault. Hi Francois Vigneault, how are you today? Hey Ryan, how are you doing, man? I am doing awesome. Great to have you back on the show. Um, and welcome to the spooktacular um, moment, actually. So as you can see, we're very much into the, uh, you know, very festive, very seasonal. <laughs> Um, do you have, by the way, any Halloween uh, traditions that you follow or any like spooky traditions? Oh, you, you know, I, I dig Halloween um, a lot, but I don't do as much stuff as I used to do. You know, I used to be big into like getting dressed up and costumes and stuff like that. And I yeah. just don't I did it for years now. I've really slowed down. Um, and I, I like that. I like when the kids come by and do trick or treating, too. But right now I live in a like kind of a apartment complex sort of thing so there's okay. less kids than there used to be so Absolutely. but I, I dig halloween halloween's a cool a cool time of year it's also just nice fall you know it's just everything's changing Oh, absolutely. And a good time to like, you know, dress up as orcs, for example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so compared to our usual interviews, this time around, we have something called Launch Breaks. So Launch Breaks is where we're going to showcase a new book or um, into a comic. It could be a manga um, or just an actual no uh, graphic novel. And we're going to dish out the scoop on what it's all about and spill the tea on is this the book meant for you? So without further ado, we'll get into it. Um, so I went ahead and read Tally, um, which should be out this month. Uh, we're going to put more information in the description below. And it, it's a great read. So it's a fun read. You're going to hit familiar uh, territories with this book. However, it is unique in its uh, way of storytelling. So for example, you'll have your um, old master. You'll have also the lazy hero. Well, in this case, not really lazy, but he's more of a, you know, a sleepy head, if you will. Um, you also have those little, you know, little cliches, like, for example, uh, everything's in grave danger. Um, and the lingo, however, is a bit different. Other than that, I think it's, you know, new grounds, new um, an exciting way of storytelling. So you're always on the run. So that's something that we see throughout the book. Uh, there is the main character, which is Tally. Um, she learns that um, she's, you know, given certain, I won't reveal too much, but there's secrets involving her that has her always on the run. And as a reader, you actually do find yourself pacing yourself and running alongside them in certain sequences and certain fight scenes. Um, so it's well done. And even the periods where they're actually taking a break and enjoying a meal, you really get a moment to, you know, absorb what's in front of you. What were some of your anime or mangas that you enjoyed growing up? Sure. Well, I, you know, I was a, like a teen in the 90s. So that's not like exactly like the first wave of manga coming over to the United States. You know, there was stuff in the 70s and 80s, especially the 80s. But, you know, I was like really big into like Rumiko Takahashi was like big for me, you know, who did Ranma One Half and Maison yeah. Nikoku. And, um, you know, of course, I read Akira as well mm -hmm. um, by Katsuhiro Otomo. Um, uh, like Masamune Shiro, who did like um, uh, Ghost in the Shell yeah. and that kind oh, of yeah. stuff, that dug all that, <laughs> dug all that, dug all that vibe. Probably the biggest one for me though, when I, like when I was first starting to read manga, was Rumiko Taha Takahashi, which was interesting because um, I don't think it jumps off the page just as the first influence that you would imagine for Soria's right. work in um, in Tali. But in one of the making of, he talks about how Meizo Nikoku was a really huge influence on him, and how he like manages relationships and like like kind of like the escalation of relationships yes. and like you know where people are maybe riffing off of each other, having little fights, but maybe there's a little bit of an attraction or something like that. Right. And so I thought that was really interesting because you know I'm translating this book from the fr from French into English. Um, Soria is um, he is um, a Laotian and French uh, creator who mm -hmm. works out of uh, who lives and works out of Paris and so he wrote this book in, in French but he's super influenced by all kinds of different like Japanese manga and Japanese role playing games and things like that right. But um, which definitely I had been aware of a lot of those but I was like oh yeah totally I, f I totally feel this vibe and so that kind of helped me understand like as I was doing the translation like what what he was going for in some in some scenes you know no absolutely and and um well, what's great is that again the lingo is very familiar however did you have to do any kind of research um for that time period or you know, sure world? like the hot the epic fantasy yes kind exactly of thing. you know um not to i mean i definitely had to do some um but not too much because i also grew up reading so much of that stuff so that like you know when he has like a scene where the people are like you know 
attack the castle we must save the king and you know like and like oh her power is too powerful and all this right. stuff like like <laughs> all the vibe like i i got the vibe like he was going for right away you know and um i think what he's going for or at least that was my interpretation is he really wants to do a classic story right, right. like you, like the reader people who have grown up reading manga or even playing like role-playing games or um playing jrpgs like dragon warrior or something mm -hmm. like that they're gonna vibe on this right away Absolutely. but i think that what Soria wanted to do is he wants to he wants to do that recipe you know like that he's a cook he knows the recipe he knows how to draw it and write it really well right. but he wants to put his own little twist on it so that like you realize that you're getting something that's 100 100% unique you know like you can't yeah. get what he's cooking you can't get anywhere else um right and so for me of course you have to change the the quote unquote recipe a little bit when you take it from french into english right. but i was always trying to be like oh, okay like if i can't get the exact word that he wants like what's the flavor or what's the 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 spice that he wants to get through and then i would be like okay let me try and do that with my own set of words you know what i mean okay yeah because there was a point um i think one of the times where i was kind of like oh wait is this something because i was maybe unfamiliar and that's why i was like oh it, it struck me is when um in the very beginning so the opening scene by the way the, the intro is crazy it's funny he just <laughs> jump, drops you right into it right yeah exactly you're just like whoa and yeah and, and i love that i love that when they they really bring you to the action they really set the scene and it's not you know heavenly uh, expository at the very beginning and a lot of introduction no no they launch you into it they don't take it for granted they don't like um hold you by the hand and, and you know walk you through for it for real for really real well yep, done. totally um so this scene takes it uh takes us where the archers are about to attack um a certain you know group that had escaped and um instead of saying like release or attack he says loose so that's why i was like oh is this like a term maybe that was used like in that um you know like you said like like in that epic uh like genre or was it something that like that that you've added to just say like oh in this world this is how they would talk or they would you know bring that across yeah i can't remember what it was in his original i'd have to i'd have to look it up but um it um i remember that's always like something that it's like a if you're ever watching like a medieval story or like something with robin hood or knights right. <laughs> and they're like and they tell the archers fire well, that's right. wrong, right? Because fire comes from like the idea of the firearm, and like you've set fire to something. True. And so or what like you're doing arrows on fire, maybe. Yeah. yeah. What, so what you're doing when you're doing an archery is you you pull back the uh, the string, yep. and then when you let it go, that's when it fires, and so that's loosing it. So uh, that's that's kind of funny that you caught onto that. But I'm weirdly enough, you caught onto something that I'm actually weirdly into, which is archery. I'm into oh, archery. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. there you go That's so ma so cool. maybe it, like maybe it was one of my pet peeves that came across and <laughs> into the into the comic i i can't remember what story. i'm sure he did uh an accurate thing in the original too i'll have to double check that's so cool because yeah it really um like well now knowing more in depth of you know where that came from but even without that context you kind of feel like oh okay like you're not just playing around with regular lingo like you're really getting into i thought something specific but then sure. when you continue it out um, you realize, you know, it's still very familiar. You won't get lost. You won't feel that you're out of place. But those key words really make it all the more authentic, which I Oh, I, I that's, enjoyed. you know, that's super good to hear because, of course, like being the translator, I have this huge responsibility to bring what Soria is putting down on the page and bring it over to a brand new audience. And then um, I also think it's really important, especially in something like this, like a medieval fantasy where you're in another yeah. world, that there are little things that you can do with the words or the what Soria is doing with the art, little things to bring the viewer into another world, right? right. And so you're you're transported, even though there's like little things sometimes, like especially like some of the characters will have lingo that connects back with like the way that you and I or even younger people might speak you know like right. Tally she's like 16 so she has a little bit of like yes. attitude right you know like she's got she's got a little bit of her, tude. Uh, yeah. yeah she's got like <laughs> but yeah. um you, so you want to have like that where maybe the reader especially like if it's a teen reader or something like that they're going to connect with it and they're going to be like oh yeah I see myself in this character but then at the same time you want them 
to feel the distance. And so they're in another right. universe, another place. Yeah. Yeah. But with, you know, I think what that ties in something you said earlier, which is like how Surya drops you into the story and you yeah. don't know what's going on. You don't know who the characters are and you're in the middle of a battle, right? Yeah. And what I kind of like about the story is unlike a lot of fantasy things, it doesn't start with a map, right? There's not a map at the very beginning right. where you're like, <laughs> okay, here I am in Middle Earth and like, okay, where's Mordor and stuff like that. This one, you're left to be, you're not exactly sure what's going on for a long time in the story. I but guess then, Talia, there, right? I mean, yeah. I guess you're like, like you're like tally exactly outside. yeah that that's a that's a really great observation and a great way to put it like the main character is in over her head and in a situation that she's not expecting to be in and then you the reader are follow that but then there's a moment where the characters open up a map and they look at the map and you the viewer can look at the map and the tally is looking at the map for the first time maybe right. and that lays out the rest of the the story and that's sort of at the end of this book but as you as the viewers will know if they ever see this book it says volume one right on the beginning because Surya he's already drawn two more volumes of this that have been published and he's going to do wow. two more so it's five it's going to be five altogether and I've read the next two already and so you the the that map at the end that kind of like starts to lay out the the path that the characters are going to take although there's a lot of twists and turns and it doesn't <laughs> go it, it's like when you know it's like when they show the heist film or something and they if they lay out the plan and then oh, yeah. of course it's not going to go to according to plan right <laughs> and, uh, and uh, of course not going according to plan was part of the plan yes but, <laughs> <laughs> but the, yeah and uh, and it was a great read it's something that, that is it's easy to go through um i've done it i've actually went through it twice cool. would i suggest it to anybody yes if, if you enjoy um really rich storytelling but also um is is you know willing to just get lost in the the whole action of it like we said you become tally in a sense that you don't know what's going on you're meeting these new characters maybe they're a bit sketchy and you do get the vibe of you know do i trust this person or distrust mm. this person right away without much context on your behalf but that's as much as she's given too right so it, it really brings you deeper and really makes you a part of that whole uh, i guess party if you will going mm -hmm. on their adventure so it's a, definitely a great read um and you said there's already two or three out is this because it's already in french and then brought on to english that's right. That's right. They're published in, in France by a publisher called Ankama, and they've already published two more books in the series. Wow. Um, and then Oni is going to be publishing these once every year. Um, and what a few different readers have already told me, because a few people got um, early copies, and the thing that comes up a lot in the reviews that I see is they're like, wow, I can't wait to see what happens next, you know, because right. it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> and they're like, yes. it seems like people are really ready for more. And I think that the good news is that everyone is going to get more really fast like there's gonna be a new book every single year and i mean awesome. to me that's really tying in with that the the real heritage of the manga right which is like that you want to like get people hooked right. um get them like reading like they like the characters they like the story they want to find out what happens next and i think that that's something that surya really like nailed he i i think anyone who likes manga stories um anyone who likes like uh movies by like Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli like if you right. like Princess Mononoke Absolutely. if you liked Howl's Moving Castle if you liked um Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind I think you're going to be right at home in this um but it's its own universe it's really different than everything else it's kind of, it's kind right. of cool it's like it's grounded but it's it's like magical but grounded do you know what I mean like yeah, it's not like exactly. every bit of magic is like not everything's dripping with magic do you know what I mean exactly so right so it, it, it's it's very very real world if you will and then you're kind of presented pieces of magic in the sense that people thought this is well kind of like us we can't prove or not prove of magic but you know if there is people that can do it you know great but then in here we actually get to witness you know certain things that you know we would never normally witness here in the real world right but um yeah i i, I did and i love the way that he actually brings the lore to so the way she unlocks mm. certain things I, I thought it was well well, well thought out um one final thing I want to bring up as well is at his final, well, actually the last few pages where he goes through his process and art process, which, you know, oh, yeah, he finds yeah. all about. But I love the fact that he took the time to give us a sample of that because it really gives you more, one, depth on how much work got in, put into this. But secondly, you can appreciate the choices that were made in order to, you know, and then seeing the final product and reading the final product. So um, definitely um, a little different from what I'm used to, but I, I definitely appreciated the fact that that was included. 
Oh yeah, I thought it was super cool. I remember when I got to the end of the book um, in French, I was like, oh, this is great. Um, and one thing that I think is really cool is that it's done in a comic book format, right? Like he yeah, he's is, like, a TV he's like hey, he's like, hey, I'm Surya, <laughs> this is my comic, and there's little panels. It's very personal. He talks about his personal life, like yeah. where he lives, his, you know, like who's in his life, where he likes to eat, what video games he likes to play. And I, I love that, that you get to know him kind of as a person just in that little snippet that you have and there's one of those at the end of every book which is kind of cool so you can kind of like follow him along as you <laughs> as you go on That's but cool. you know i appreciate that because it takes a lot of work to do that extra go the extra mile and do a comic you know it's like that comic that i draw orcs in space you know at the yeah. end of every volume i put like my notes you know mm -hmm. i like I, I i put some sketches and then i'll write little notes right but that's a lot faster than like redrawing everything and creating <laughs> like a little story with little jokes and everything I, I i thought it was really cool that he gave he gave the reader that extra little bit and uh, for anybody who wants to grab tally where can they find this book so it's going to be everywhere that comic books are available. Um, it's being released through Oni Press, so your local comic book okay. shop would have it. But, you know, like your Barnes & Noble, your Indigo, um, the uh, Librairie Drawn and Quarterly, if mm -hmm. you're here in Montréal, um, anywhere you go, they're going to probably either have it or they can order it for you. Um, and so that would be great. Or if you have like a... You know, I know some people are blessed to have like a manga store in their right. in their neighborhood. You know, like here in Montreal, we have a place called Otaku, which is pretty cool that yep. does manga stuff. Absolutely. Um, and so if you if you love manga, you're listening to this, you love manga, uh, maybe go to your local manga shop and tell them about this title because they might not be aware of it, right? Because it's coming out of France. Right. So they might Impress not know that there's this this manga. I think it's going to be at a lot of comic book shops because Oni, Oni Press, you know, they're, they're pretty well known in the Absolutely. industry. Um, but uh, yeah, basically everywhere. And I'd love to see it in the hands of everybody or, at, you know, at your public library, whatever. And on a side note, uh, besides translating and lettering for uh, this book, Tally and your orcs in space, you also have your own podcast, if I'm not mistaken, called Apples to Draft. Can you That's give us a bite on that? Oh, that's right. Oh, a bite of the apple. I you, <laughs> you, you threw a pun in there. <laughs> Got to do well, it right. <laughs> uh, that, that, well, I mean, it was a bit of a stretch. Oh, oh, that's, that's good. Oh, there you go. You came, you came <laughs> lock and loaded. That's awesome. Well, you know, I, I, I let you. Know, I try. I try my best when I'm on your show to to respect <laughs> the rules. You know, exactly. But, yeah, Apples to Giraffes. That's my podcast that I do with my friend Jonas Madden Connor. He's also a comic book artist, and it's all about adaptation. So the art of turning a graphic novel into a movie or um, a book into a TV show, whatever, what have you. And each episode, we kind of like do a deep dive on like one work sometimes it's been adapted a lot of times it hasn't been and we'll talk about like what we think the challenges of bringing it to the screen might be if we think it would work at all wow. um and uh yeah it's been a lot of fun you know it's we're just getting started with it but um and i'm new to the world of podcasting but i i don't know <laughs> no, I, 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 i've actually joined in done a few just to listen in and it's it's it's, it's, it's interesting and it's very um, sometimes you'll have people just like fan out and be like, oh yeah, these people are cast for, for example, this or this or because yeah. of, you know, it's because they're like popular, but you guys go really beyond like, oh, because of this, you know, acting sequence or whatever, they'd be fitting for this. So a question for you, if we were to cast someone for Tally, who would that be? Oh man, I've never, I've never thought about it. So that <laughs> is, um... Or, or just like Tally herself, not not the, yeah. the party. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I may have to. Uh, gosh, I may have to come back to you with the next time when we have Tally Volume Two. I, I'll definitely hold you to that. <laughs> you had me on the spot there. I like it, but uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I but I, but I joked. I didn't. I didn't do it. I, I don't know. But um, you know what was kind of <laughs> cool is uh, one thing that Surya I know did in in French was he did a live read throughs of tally volume one with okay. all these different people doing the voices I, wow. I like i thought that was super cool so maybe who really knows cool. maybe we can get something like that happening in english too uh but uh yeah definitely food for thought so you definitely want to check out your local comic book store and you also want to check out if not your local bookstore they can probably order it for you anyways um just maybe, we'll put in the description below all you'll need to know in order to grab your issue one um and it's a must i mean for the experience for you know the 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 true to character well also you know even the lingo being so true to what it is that they're going through it's not just 
oh, somebody's trying out, uh, you know, this epic and then, you know, keeping it very current and just using very latent terms. It really does dive, you know, bring you into it. And you can appreciate the subtle hints and details that are in it, not only through the story itself, but also the art. That's one thing that I've also adored is that there's so much going on. However, there are, you know, breaks as usual, and it gives you time to pace yourself. But it's just the details are just uh, tremendous. And you definitely, definitely want to get this. Um, any last words before we go? No, man, that was awesome. So I'm really glad that you liked the book. Um, I really enjoyed working on it, and I really I liked reading it. I think, um, you know, I think Surya is just re he's really he's really a fan of uh, this kind of story. You can tell it means a lot to him, and he's just bringing his all to to tell it. And uh, I think it really works. So I'm, I hope people discover it and uh, and let us know what they think. You know, maybe people can comment in the video if they end up reading it. It would be really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, that, well, that's another thing. If you've enjoyed this episode, we always suggest you hit that like button. But also, if you would like more of uh, you know reviews or even interviews with people such as François Vigneault, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button this way you stay on top. But yes, in the comments below, we would highly suggest if you've read it or you want to read it, go ahead and hit, put it in the comments below. What is it that you for sparked your interest or what part did you enjoy from the book to begin with? We can start a conversation and be more than happy to uh, you know do a round table with you guys. Um, other than that, I think one little, you know, this is my own little thing is that maybe, you know, there could have been more puns, but I understand, you know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's tough. You know, you got to do those multilingual puns, but oh, uh, man. Can you, you got to go backwards and forwards <laughs> and figure them out. The, no, I'm, doing another, I'm doing another translation uh, that has more puns in it. So uh, I'll, oh, really? I'll let you know when that one comes out. <laughs> yeah, that'll be maybe next year. I'll, I'll let you know what's going on with that one. Awesome. Can't wait. Thank you again for coming on, Francois Vigneault. Always appreciate to have you on the show. Um, you guys take it easy. Peace. Cool, brother. Peace. <laughs>